All right, thank you for staying. Now we'll begin with uh, the Daily Trust newspaper uh, this morning. Uh, it has the story leading that says APC presidential ticket. Buhari meets governor's mom on preferred candidate. Leaves aspirants, others guessing, off to Malabo for AU summit. No date for screening 48 hours to primaries. PDP picks candidate tomorrow. Ongoing party primaries, a mess, says Jonathan. That's the story above the lead story. Insecurity, Abuja Kaduna fly ticket sell for over 100,000 Naira. And then you have, of course, the pictorial a cross section of Nigerians welcoming the president at the African Union extraordinary session uh, of the Assembly of Heads of State in uh, Malabo. And of course, beside that, Omo Agege, Kole, Naji, Idris speak APC governorship tickets. Zulum, Buni, Sule, Matole, Inua, Abiodun get return tickets. And then below that, children seek role in decision making as Buhari raises hope of future generations. And then you have the last story below the pictorial. Presidential raise. Osimbanjo's campaign trips funding raises dust. Unofficial use of presidential jet, act of corruption. VP hasn't breached law, and that's according to lawyers. These are the stories on the front page of Daily Trust this morning. Well, as we have earlier told you, we have Nuruddin Abdullah, the editor of 21st Century Chronicle, to have a look at some of the stories that made headline this morning. Good morning. Welcome Good morning, to well, quite very interesting stories on the Daily Trust newspaper. But I would like for you to begin uh, with a story about uh, presidential race, Oshi Bajo's campaign trips, funding raises uh, dust. Uh, and we're also seeing that lawyers are saying the VP hasn't breached any law. Can we get your thoughts on that? Yes. Uh, legally speaking, that's the, the lawyers are correct. But morally, you know, there are questions that need answers because we know that a moment packs an office of the vice president. But um, by and large, he's not doing anything new. President Buhari did it in 2019. He used state machineries to come to jet around the country and canvas for votes. Prior to that, President Jonathan did it. In 2015, he was a sitting president. He jetted around the country. He used state resources and canvas for vote, which is personal. Tadis's governor seeking re election are doing the same. So, if you look at it from that perspective, you know, what the vice president is doing is not something out of the ordinary, it's something that we no, it's something that has been happening all this while. You know, if you look at the Constitution, unlike uh, during the second, um, before the Second Republic, if you are seeking an office, you have to step down. Unless maybe if we want to adopt that, you can separate the two. The Vice President and his immediate family are entitled for 247 close security services. He uses the presidential fleet wherever he wants to go. So now that he's looking for votes, you know, he is aspiring to be the number one person in the country. Can you say, okay, Mr. VP, where are you going to Kano now? Is it for an official assignment? How can you separate official assignment from his personal stuff? In the US, for instance, they have a system. Like even Body in the White House. There was a time I read somewhere that uh, Michelle Obama, when Obama was president, you know, they invited some guests. At the end of the day, for dinner, the chief of staff handed her a bill. He said, Yes, you are covered, but your guests are not. We don't have that system here. Uh, you know, does this, in your opinion, you know, also? 
uh, validates the argument that some are raising about even, you know, maybe the vice president or some other elected officials stepping aside when they are vying for political office, all in the spirit of this, you know, uh, providing this playing, you know, level playing ground for all aspirants in an election. Because as we have it now, it only borders on political appointees alone. So maybe the law should have gone further to also take a look at that. Because if you definitely look at the uh, government resources that goes into all of this, it's quite huge. By the time you add that of the vice president and that of the governors, there are aides that are, you know, be, that are going to be getting allowances for some of these travels and the rest of them. Yes, it's something that is, uh, would have been fantastic, but I don't see us doing it. And like you rightly said, you know, as a sitting governor, sitting president, sitting vice president, seeking for another office, you know, you have an advantage over your opponents. Let's take the vice president, for instance, he's going to Zamfaram to meet delegates. That's a purely a presidential movement. All the adjoining states will deploy DSS personnel, police officers, and now even military because of the insurgent, because of the banditry taking place there. Minus the advanced party that will move from Abuja. So you know, all this confer on due advantage on the vice president compared to others. If Tinibu is going to the same place, there will be such mass security movement. You understand? So these are the issues. Unfortunately, you know, our system is so flawed in, 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 in those uh, areas. Again, maybe what we should have done is, you even talk about political office holders. They refuse to step down. Why? Mr. Ayuba is a minister of, in the Ministry of XYZ. He wants to be governor of his states. But because of the importance of the ministry, the influence he exerts, you have to use your influence as a minister to browbeat your state governor, to give you the ticket. It will be a different ball game mm -hmm. if you step down. Why are they afraid to step, to step down? Because they know they don't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. So, so th this are some of the. Maybe it will take us a very long time to certainly. Uh, uh, common ministers won't step down. They have dragged the matter to the Supreme Court. No talk of saying the president or the vice president. Some of them won't see re-election. If you say they must step down, I know maybe it will upset the situation. You know all this uh, army of uh, desperate politicians with money just to buy, to dish out 100 million and be buying private jets and to be jetting around with private jets. I want to feel. Look right. at the money. Yeah. Okay, now, uh, still, the, the former president is raising concern about, you know, the ongoing party progress. He described it as a mess. You know, what, what would you make of this? I mean, uh, he, one of the major issues that he's raising is about, you know, the fact that delegates are now, you know, being paid you know hundreds of millions to 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 vote i don't want to say that uh, he's equally part of the problem yes the 2023 primaries has been unprecedentedly monetized like never before we should ask why and this time around, it's not hidden anymore. No one is even hiding anything. It doesn't look like it's some well, kind of why, sh why should you hide it? Yes, it's for the highest bidder. How much is the dollar? It's, it's not the same reason why dollar is now uh, to 610, 610. 610, 600 Because the likes of Mr. Ayuba, Haji Azenab, you have packed the money long ago. Now it is time to buy up all the delegates. And you meet the delegate once in four years. Seven years ago, some delegates voted 
for some candidates, not because they were giving money. Remember what happened? Okada riders, shoe shiners, janitors, petty traders. We are buying a child card and selling to say a presidential candidate because they believe he doesn't even have the money to be there. So he needs to be supported. They did all that seven years after. What have they get? So where does that leave the you know politics of good conscience, poli politics of merit, you know, politics of you know having the right people in the right places? to make the need a change. You know, we've had you know, an aspirant in Kaduna, for instance, uh, Sheh Usani, who said, well, maybe he, he didn't give anybody a dime. And that's why he, you know, he failed woefully in the primary election with just two votes. So when, when you see that, are you worried about what you know, the message that that sends to you know, our political uh, I think we should find out how did we arrive here. I told you, seven years ago, the situation was not like this. The incumbent administration came. Not that seven years ago, delegates were not being paid. No, no, no. Is that, is that, not yeah. this much. Not this with impunity. They are flaunting it. Some are even recovering their money. You understand? They bribe some people, and they refuse to do their bidding, and now they are hiring talks to recover their bribes. Where are the security agencies? Where are the anti-corruption agencies? What I'm saying here is this. Why are we here? Seven years ago, we voted people with conscience. We voted people we thought are honest. Seven years after, where are we? That's why they say, OK, it's just, let me get what I have to get now. Mr. Ayuba, go to the National Assembly. I'll never see you. We meet next in the next four years. So that is it. People have lost confidence in the system. Mm. And you will what, uh, what is happening now among the delegates will be replicated even though at a lower level with the, elect, with the electorate mm. during the general election. Mm. They are up for grab. Okay. No sweet talk again. People came here and they met all manner, they even cried. But when they got there, they had a baptism of fire. All the promises they made, they recanted. The system they made, they destroyed it. So people say, okay, let's do it now. Well, that's a dangerous... And the economic realities. Yes. Well, that's a dangerous place to be, really, because uh, it's not as if, you know, resorting to this line of thought is going to change anything. I mean, it's, not, it, it's going to make life any better for Nigerians as a whole, isn't it? Sure. That is the dilemma the country is now. Politicians make all manner of promises. They fail. And, you know, there are people you don't expect much from. So even if you are disappointed, you know, you won't be that uh, bothered so much. But somebody you have so much confidence on, and he disappointed you. So that is it. So I even say, look, look at the previous elections and see this uh, of the season election. There will be serious vote, uh, voter apathy. Why should I vote? You understand? Because of disappointment. Yeah and the disenchantment. So that's the problem. I don't know how we're going to overcome it, not in the near future, because unless if the political ecosystem has changed and politicians, we hope they change. Uh, now let's take a look at uh, some more papers, talking about the Blueprint newspaper this morning and the lead story on the Blueprint. Uh, read 72 hours to APC presidential primaries, fear, anxiety over party state of preparedness. Uh, and then you find uh, the writers there, pro Tinubu group laments, warns, we are worried, say APC groups, uh, and then no cause for alarm, Oshibaja supporters. 
Uh, you'd find other stories as well, just uh, below the picture there of President Muhammad Buhari and Vice President Yumiya Shibata. Monkeypox, federal government commences surveillance at ports of entry. Uh, you'd also see the story about Buhari attends AU Extraordinary Summit in Malibu. Terrorists kill four PDP in Niger delegates. Uh, my life in danger. DCP Kari cries out, seeks review of bail request. Uh, and then on page 14, you see the story about Kaduna. Ashur Flaws Yero Shehusani picks PDP Guba ticket. And on page 22, over 100 million mobile lines inactive, as at March 2022, says NCC. Uh, and then uh, you see the story about Nigeria's telcos suffering from multiple taxation report reveals. These are some of the major highlights on the Blueprint newspaper. But I would like for you to touch on uh, the story about uh, Abakari. He's saying that his life is in danger and he's seeking a uh, bail application for the government to reconsider that. They said the risk of such crime. Well, this is a vicious cycle. Yes. It is left for Abakari's uh, illegal team to convince the Honorable Judge of the Federal High Court to prove that indeed his life is in danger. And I don't see the Honorable Judge being convinced and just granting bail. At the highest is to relocate him. The DSS has so many facilities to keep him. If he wants to be in isolation, they have such facilities. And I don't see the NDLE legal team allowing him, because they'll say that if you grant him bail, he will tamper with the, lit <coughs> the litigation. And even before this now, you know, there was a story yesterday by the major newspaper. What happened that is, uh, the people, the, 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 the newspaper was saying the people he arrested, extorted, mm. by threatening him. He met them in Kujie. Mm. And they threatened yeah. to kill him. Uh, uh, we had a response from the uh, Nigeria Correctional uh, Service, service, you know, service yeah. dismissing that report, saying that look, there was no such thing, that uh, you know, there is no any threat to the life of Abakari. Uh, and that's what uh, they are telling us. Yes. Uh, Both the CG and the FCG. Yeah, like, that's Corum. It is expected for them to say that. But they didn't go in. If you check the two statements, they didn't go into the integrity that he was having almost a daily consultations with his marabouts, that his family visit him, that he has access to mobile phones, computers, internet services, and what if he, in fact, the story was even saying that he had to buy up his uh, safety by giving two to 200,000 to some of those, his assailants. Well, that sounds conducive, but yeah. No, but, well, you remember, so, um, anything can happen inside those places. You remember in Kirikiri in Lagos, and a convicted Internet fraudster pull out, pull up a uh, one million dollar internet fraud right from Ikirikiri prison. He was serving a term. Mm. You remember that? So, unfortunately, it is not only the delegates that have been monetized. Mm. So many aspects of our society, you know. With money, which, which is which is one of the dangers, uh, you know. Of that that, that is it. That, that is it. Mm. All right. Uh, let's take a look now at the uh, Nation newspaper. Uh, the Nation newspaper leads with uh, how Saolu Abiodun Abdul Razak won tickets. It also has another story <coughs> above the masthead that says, "Sultan, fish out." Prosecute unknown gunmen. And you also have man laments effect of interest rates hike. I didn't abandon youth service, Odua insist. Primaries monetized. A mess, says Jonathan. 
These are the, some of the stories on the nation. And let's take a look at the punch as well. On the punch, it leads with the story that says, Governorship primaries. Fresh crisis hits APC. Factions boycott polls. Threaten suits. Lagos aspirant protest exclusion. Saolu, Abiodun, Omakege, Matawale. Others win. Abe, Ogun, Sokoto. Aspirants alleged fraud. Uh, threatens suit. Uh, Keamu Ojobo. Others absent. You'll also see uh, CBN defects Naira, uh, defends Naira with $3.4 billion in two months. And then the story about the APC primary court decides Jonathan's fate. Today, ex president gets waiver. Osinachi, federal government slams homicide charges against husband. Police arrest. 43,329 kidnap robbery suspects in one year. And then PDP gets parallel governorship candidates in Ogun, uh, Kano, and Akwaibo. I will ensure Nigeria exports fuel in two years. And that's according to uh, Tunde Bakari, one of the presidential hopefuls under the platform of the APC. Now, let's talk about the parallel uh, primaries that happened in some of the states uh, in the People's Democratic Party. The Kano state's uh, own case seemed to be very dramatic, isn't it? Yes, because uh, the major uh, stakeholders have pulled out and formed the NNPP. Konkoso is synonymous to PDP in Kano, particularly since he parted with his uh, successor, Governor Ganduji. And the Konkoso group, you know, try their best to ensure that uh, the party is uh, obliterated. And you can see that if you look at the court cases. They pull out of the party, formed a new party, but they insisted that the Kano State Executive of the PDP are people loyal to him. The Sagagi official, you know. Mm -hmm. As of yesterday, I think that was the fourth court case. Sagagi so was uh, affirmed as the legitimate uh, leader of the party in the state. Another court threw him out. He appealed. He was reinstated. Another court threw him out. And yesterday, he was brought back. So there are conflicting judgments from various courts over the same issue. And politically, you know, that is the handiwork of uh, Konkoso. He wants to emasculate the party. You know. Particularly, you know, the party has two factions. Mm -hmm. the, the Ambassador Wali group, which has been at loggerheads since more than a decade ago with Konkoso, even when he was there. So when he even pulled out to, to form an NPP, he deliberately hijacked the party structure instead of handing it over to the Wali group, who are still there. And um, some fear of his uh, uh, lieutenants who refused to go with him, like that. Dr. Langweni, a real Konkoso lieutenant, but he stayed back. So what happened wasn't surprising. They wanted actually no candidates for the PDP, so, so that you know, it will narrow the, the, chances. The, the, the chances. It's APC versus N, NPP in the state. But if you allow the PDP to remain a bit stronger, then it will divide the vote. Because already, these two groups are against the APC, the Ganduja group. Mm -hmm. But now, as it is, almost uh, they have uh, uh, succeeded in eroding the influence of the... Uh, okay. All right. Uh, well, we would uh, continue to, you know, keep you updated and to uh, bring all of these stories uh, to the forefront as they continue to unfold as we approach uh, the final days of the primary elections, party plan primary elections. And this is where we end uh, the newspaper review. We'll take a short breather, but our guest reviewer will still remain with us in the studio as we also talk about uh, other issues. Please stay with us. When the situation where you find that they want to look at the situation. Not necessarily uh, tribal or regional.